This is Math 152. We're going to talk about the first part of Section 2.2. And this is going to be about finding the volume of shapes uh, with slicing using calculus. So if I look at my, if I just had a cylinder like this, um, as you know, a, a cylinder, it has a base that's a circle, right? So like if I, if I just look straight onto the base, it should be a circle. It is a circle that has a radius. And then this has a certain height. So um, in geometry, like high school geometry, when we're talking about how to find the area of the volume of this, sorry, we say it's the, the area of the base times the height. And the thinking is that like the area of the base is some circle. So pi r squared. And we have this circle. And then what we can do is we can say um, each of these circles basically has, we could have a height of one and now they're disks, right? We kind of make them into uh, three dimensional things and then we know their volume. And then this height is basically how many of these disks we have. This is an idea that's like, this is, um, this is thinking of the volume by slicing it into pieces. And the thing is to realize that the cross section here is a, is a circle on this shape. And that is the idea we're going to we're going to build. Instead of standing shapes up, we're going to put them on their side uh, for now, so we can think about them relative to x. Here's a here's another idea. I'm going to make this shape, and this I just stole a picture like this out of your text. So that's we have this trapezoid, and let's just say that it just gets bigger, and it gives us this three dimensional shape, right? So we've got something like that. Now, if we wanted to find the volume of this, a good approximation would be like, well, what's the area of this face? We'll just call that the area. Um, you know, some function gives us that area, or some, some value, x value, whatever our x value is. We know that, like, if you, if you look along the way, like, this is actually not the same size, right? Like, this is getting bigger. So it's not going to be straight, but we could do a good approximation by going like, change this x value here, right? X, just think about x as just being this distance, maybe starting here, going out to the end. So we could we could write some function that gives us the area of just the face. And, and then if we multiply that by this change in x, since this is getting bigger, that'll be a little small, but it'd be a good approximation. Cut it up into that many pieces. And then notice what we would do is we would, the volume then, our approximation for the volume would be the volume of that face multiplied by our change in x. That gets our, that gets our volume in here. And then what we do is we'd add up uh, however many x's that we're using, right? However many like sections we've broken that up into. And n would just be like, how many of these are we doing? So this change in X is this distance here. This N is how many times we've done this. And this value is the face on whatever one we're on. Like it could be this face times that distance, but then the next bigger face times that distance. So notice that gives us an approximation for this. And, you know, we're in calculus. So think about the more times we split this up, the smaller we make this change in X, uh, the closer we'll get to our approximation. So we could just say, well, let's let that number of cuts go to infinity. So we cut this infinitely slice, like infinitely thin, <laughs> if that makes sense. And then we have the infinite number of these shapes that we, that we add together, and it gives it to us. But we know that this, when we let this limit go to infinity, this is um, just an integral. I could think of this from A to B of just that area times the derivative, right? If I'm running from B to A, or whatever. A to B, whatever direction I'm going. So this is this is the trick. This is the way we're gonna think about this. So um, let's let's set up a problem. So uh, what I've tried to draw here is a pyramid with a with a square base. Look like that? I don't know. Um, so, anyways. So it has a square base, and it has uh, there's some things that we know about it. We know that it's uh, the side length here is three, so the side of the base is three. This is a, this is a square, and then um, we know the height of it 
just from the middle of the square straight up. That is. And what we're going to try to do is find the volume of this thing. Now there are formulas for um, for the volume of a of a pyramid, and we're just going to use some calculus to derive it. So the thing I want us thinking about is what's the cross section. So if I if I cut this across this way, the cross section is always going to be a square, and uh, so that square. I'm going to say it's it's s by s, and I, I'll figure out what s is. And I'm going to try and do everything in terms of x. So what I'm thinking about is this running, like there's an x-axis here that's just running straight out. I'll draw it down here. So like x is this, and I'm going to run the height along x. That, so this notice this is the thing that's going to be changing from 0 to 6. So in other words, what I'm thinking about is this is just a combination of these little squares that are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Or if I'm going this way, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and then I want to add up all of those areas to give me the volume of this. Uh, hopefully you can picture the squares coming down. So I'm going to now think about what my side like this, what is the area actually in here that I'm going to try and find? And what I notice is in this shape, when this height is six, this is three. This is six. This is three. So proportionally, what should happen is as this goes back to x, but this is a distance of x, this will be a smaller side here. And what will it be? That's, that's my side length. So I know that if I think about proportions here, the side length divided by x, right, like this over this, is the same as well, when it maxes out, the side length is 3 and the height is 6. So again, x is my height, and I'm letting it, I'm going to think about it getting, as this gets bigger up to 6, this 3 gets bigger up to 3. And it does this in its proportional way. And notice this 3 6 is 1 half. So x divided by uh, s divided by x is always going to be 1 half. If I multiply both sides by x, I know that the side length is half of x. Right? Like when this is at 6, this is at 3 half of it. So when this would be at 2, uh, this height would be at 2, that little square that should be that there should be at one half of it because this is like a straight line so this knowing that this is a straight line knows that th knows that this grows in a ratio of one half as this grows by two this grows by one so if my side length is one half x that next. so the area of this is s squared so my area is one half x squared oftentimes people will forget to square the the multiplier in here too. So this is one fourth x squared. That's my area. So in other words, if I tell you where what x we're at, I, you can plug it into here and it'll tell you the area of the um, of the base of the square that we're doing. So again, what we're doing is we're we're slicing this up into little squares. And each square has this area depending on how far we are along from six, along that six. So in other words, here's what we're going to do. We're going to run from 0 to 6. We're going to let x run from 0 to 6. And then we're going to add up all of those little squares. So cool. Um, so now we can just do this. So I'm going to take that constant out of there. Do my integral 0 to 6. Uh, so x squared. Then I plug that into my calculator, and uh, notice it's this is now one twelve x cubed from six to zero, so times six cubed. I get eighteen cubic units, so that should be the volume of this shape. Now it's interesting. There's there's a formula for the pyramid uh, that has a like a pyramid's formula that we know from geometry is one third. Oh, there's our one third. Um, the area of the base times the height. 
And in this case, the area of the base was basically whatever this side is squared, right? So it was three squared. So a squared times the height, if this is our a, and this is our h. And if I plug my three and my six into here, I get that 18 values. So this is interesting. Um, we could actually derive this formula with the same sort. So here is my attempt at drawing a um, pyramid with a square base. And notice what's going on here is um, instead of the six and the three, I just have a general H and a, a right, for my side length and my height. So I'm going to go through the same sort of steps thinking about this. Uh, I know that my cross section is going to be squares, which are going to be A by A, the area of which will be A squared. I'm just going to derive this formula using the, the calculus just to kind of generalize it, just to see how this can go. So I know that this is going to run, this is my x value, and it's going to run from 0 to 8. And then what I need is the area uh, times dx times the change in x. So let me think about setting this up proportionally. Um, if I'm only here at, say, x, this length is x, I've got a smaller square. So I want to think about how this side length um, relate side length in terms of x. So I'm going to think uh, ratios, ratios again. So my side length relative to x, this length relative to this distance. Well, I know it maxes out at a side length of a and a height of h. Just like here, I set it up with the uh, 3 and 6, side length and the height. So I've won s in terms of x. I know that the side length is going to be a divided by h, that multiplier times x. So that tells me that the area must be a h x squared, which is a squared h squared times x squared. There's my area. Remember, this is just a constant. These are just numbers. Uh, they're not changing like x is changing relative to x. Okay, so let's run this then. This is a constant, so I'm going to bring it out. a squared over h squared, run it from 0 to h, x squared dx. So I'm going to do this uh, integral. h, if I plug a 0 in for x, it goes, so I don't have to worry about the subtracting part. But now I have this times one-third, plug in the h, h cubed, which is, if I think about this, three h squareds in the denominator. I've got a one up here. I've got an a squared up here. I've got an h cubed up here. Uh, the h cubed cancels out. So a squared h over three, which is one-third a squared h. So we can derive these formulas for volumes uh, by using calculus. How's that for gorgeous? Let's do a problem like this again with a cone. Put this cone over on its side. I know that cones have a base that are that are circles. And this particular one is going to have a radius of 3 on its base and a, and a height of 10. And so if I think about these the cross sections of these, cross sections of a cone is a is a circle. So I can just think of like cutting these into these little, uh, there's a bunch of little circles here. So I'm going to sketch it. The base of this is a circle with a certain radius. And then I have some change in x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this height run from 0 to 10. That's my x. And I'm going to think of the circles, the radii, in terms of x, right? The area of it in terms of x. I know the area of a circle is pi r squared. But I don't want r, I want it in terms of x, so that then I can, uh, I can run my integral. So notice that this is in this ratio, 10 to 3. So I could say when the radius is 3, the height is 10. Right? It's going to be in this proportion. This is my r. In other words, somewhere along here, this 3, this is 10. When this is x, 
this is r. You can see how r is to 3 as x is to 10. So I want r in terms of x, so I'm going to multiply by 3, so r is 3 tenths of x. In other words, this radius is 3 tenths of that height, which happens here, right? 3 tenths of 10 is 3. So if that's my radius, here's another part people forget. I'm, my cross section is the circle, and I want the area of the circle. I'm adding up those areas. So my area then is going to be pi times 3 tenths x squared. So as I square this, I get 9 one hundredths pi times x squared. There's my area. I'm going to run x or the height from 0 to 10. Boop, 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 right? Giving me these slices of circles uh, that have this area. And then I have some little change in x in there. So I basically have these infinite circles, infinite number of circles that have um, these areas, and I'm adding them all up, summing them all up. Okay, let's do this. Uh, this is just a number. This is just a constant, so I'm going to bring it out so it doesn't muck up the works. If I plug a zero in, it's going to give me a zero, so I don't have to worry about that. Plug it because I'm going to be subtracting zero. So plug in the 10, though, so I've got... cubed over 3. So I noticed that uh, you can show this in your calculator, or you can say, do a little reducing. That gives me a 3 up there. 100 is 10 squared, so 10 squared gives me a 10 up here. So the answer is 30 pi. And so the volume of this shape would be uh, 30 pi, whatever the units are, cubed. Right? We didn't have any units. And um, you know the, the volume of a, of a cone, well, I don't know if you know, but it's 1 third pi r squared h. Um, you could plug in plug in R and H and still get that answer. But we can get it this way through calc. Um, and again, if we wanted to derive this formula, we could set it up, uh, set all these up in terms, run it from zero to H. All right, so there's a couple of ideas. Um, sometimes these get a little trickier. So, so I have this this shape, this base, which is a is a circle. And I've kind of tilted it this way because I'm trying to lay it like flat, like you're looking at it like it was on the table. Because we're going to have a solid here that's made of squares that come up like straight across the circle like this and then just come up. And so notice that like I have uh, that square there. And if I, if I keep going, I would have a little bit bigger of a square. But there's an infinite number of these, right? So as these are going to get bigger, max out in the middle and keep going. And think of that as really dense, and that's just going to be the shape that we're going to find the volume of. So this, let's set this up. We know our cross section is a square. And let's just say it's, it's S by S. Um, and now let's figure out S in terms of X. So this thing's going to run, you know, bigger, 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 smaller, smaller, smaller. So you, you can see it has some symmetry right here. So I could do, uh, instead of running the whole thing, maybe I'll just take the integral of half of it and then double that. And this distance right here, since this radius is 10, this distance is 10. So let's run it from 0 to 10 instead of running it from 0 to 20, right? I'm just going to run it from 0 to 10 and, and double it. And then that's my x value. So that's x right there. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get s in terms of x because it need my area squared in terms of in terms of x. So I can take that integral. So x, notice that x takes on like this distance is x if this is zero. So I'm going to sketch over here. This is x. And this is 10. I want to know this distance right here, right? Because I have a square that's right here. I have a square that's right here. So notice that like this is all in the same plane. So if this whole distance is 10 and this distance is x, this distance right here must be uh, 10 minus x. 
from the center to like the middle of the square, like from here to here. This goes to the edge of the circle, so that's 10. I know it's hard to see, but that's like here. It's the circles like this. So the radius is 10. The set's is ridiculous. So what I have now is the squares here. This distance is 10 minus x. This distance is 10. So if I if I if I flatten this out, right? Here's the center. This distance is 10 minus x. And this is a this is a circle. This is the part of the square. This is the radius of the circle. So now it's drawn so the square is coming straight up at you along that line. And so notice I have a right angle here. So this side length has to, I can get at it by using Pythagorean theorem. Now that, what I was calling the side length, is really half of the side of the square, right? If this is the edge of the square, this is half of it. So I'm just going to use a dummy variable here. I'm just going to call it S2. So half of the side of the square, Pythagorean theorem, hypotenuse squared minus, oh, that squared, is hypotenuse squared minus that leg squared, 100. And I'm going to multiply this this part right here out. 100 minus 20x plus x squared. Distribute that negative into there. So 100 minus 100 goes. So half uh, s that s squared is 20x minus x squared. Um, so half of the side length is the square root of 20x minus x squared. So this distance right here is that. So the whole side then must be two of those. So the area is this squared. So two squared is four. Square root squared is itself. Gosh, so there's my area of my cross section. That's the area of one of these squares relative to x. So you tell me how far from zero I am, I tell you the area of that square. Great. So that means, like I was setting up, I can run from zero to 10. I'm only going halfway, so I'm going to double it. Of that area, relative to x. All right. Um, this is a constant, this four, so I'm going to pull it out. Two times four is eight. Take that integral. Cool. And so then now I plug in uh, those values. Uh, the zero, it's going to be plug in 10 minus zero squared. Uh, I'm just going to do it with my calculator. Multiply that by eight, which I get that. You could say it's like 5,333 and a third if you want. I just have this love affair with fractions. Uh, cubic units. Man, what a great setup. Okay, notice what we did. A lot of the work was that was algebra, right? It was like determining how how long the side length is relative to this distance as x is changing. Once we did that, you know, the the integral was pretty simple. So it's really about like this work of how am I setting up the area of my cross section? That is the that's the tough one. So here's here's one more. Uh, I'm going to have a shape this is x this is y and i'm going to have this line that goes through two zero and zero two and then this is flat so it's going to come straight up at you but what i'm going to do is i'm going to have these cross sections <laughs> that are semicircles and these semicircle uh, cross sections are going to give us a volume so if i kind of lay this flat i'm going to move it so like x is here and y is here and then I have a shape that's coming up. So think of this like kind of like more laid flat on a table so we can get this get this shape better. There's two zero, there's zero two. And then I have like this distance here is the radius of half a circle. So I have this collection of semicircles in here and that makes this volume. So notice that my shape, my cross section, 
is a semicircle uh, that has a certain radius. And the area of that is pi r squared. So a couple things. Uh, I need to figure out how to determine that radius. Notice that radius is half of this distance right here. Right, like this is it on its side. I've kind of rotated it this way and flattened it. Like this is at this x, this x right here came to here. This y came to here, and then I flattened it on the table so you can see the semicircle. Um, so I need to know it's basically half of that distance. So it, this line right here would be starting at two with a slope of negative one. So y equals uh, two minus x. So in other words, like when I'm here at one, this total distance, this total distance uh, is up here at the height of one, right? So that radius is going to be half of that. If I was here at a half, x is a half. Notice that y is two minus a half, right? So three halves. The radius is half of that. So uh, the radius is going to be half of 2 minus. All right. And notice I said the area is pi times the radius squared, but this is only a half circle. Because the area of this shape is actually 1 half pi r squared. So if the radius is this, the area of my cross section is 1 half pi times the radius squared. The radius is 1 half 2 minus x squared. So uh, one half times pi, this one half gets squared, one fourth. And just for now, I'm just going to leave this as two minus x squared. So this is one eighth pi, or pi over eight squared. There's my area. So each one of these semicircles has an area of pi over eight, uh, two minus x squared, right? Where my x is running from zero to two. So x goes from zero to two. Boop, 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 boop. And along the way, the area runs along this. So I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I'll go from here to work this one out. Uh, this is a constant. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to multiply this out. 2 minus x squared. I remember when you're squaring something, you're multiplying it by itself which is uh, 4 minus 4x, right, because negative 2x, negative 2x, plus x squared, uh, dx. Okay, so now I can do this, pi over 8 from 0 to 2. What's nice of it is if I plug that uh, 0 into there, that's going to 0 out, so I don't have to worry about subtracting that part. If I plug this 2 into here, uh, this ends up becoming 8 thirds. Uh, the eights divide out, so that would be pi over three cubic units. These problems take work to set up. They are they're not easy. They pull on a lot of algebra skills. They pull on a lot of geometry relationships. Uh, take your time. Look at the answers. Ask questions, and uh, it will uh, it will come it will come to you. But you do put the time in on these. All right. Uh, like I said, post any questions or send them to me. Uh, message me.